Welcome to Castleton United Methodist's Kids Church. We're so glad to have you here today. We just finished a week of virtual vacation Bible school. And who would have thought that we could do vacation Bible school without meeting face to face? But we had a great time and I hope you were able to join us. So for the month of August, we're gonna start with the book of Genesis and a great story at the very beginning. But first, we're gonna go back and we're gonna do one of our Vacation Bible School videos. So let's dance! Yeah. vacation Bible school every time we hear those songs. So for the month of August, we have a memory verse like we do every month. And this is the one for uh, the month of August. And it's from Psalm, the book of Psalm 145. And I'll give you a second to get that. And then my version's a little different than the version that we're studying. So the one that they have is, Lord, you are great. You are worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. And we know that God is so great. And we're gonna be studying creation. And there is no limit to God's creativity. I mean, think about it. Look, look at this. I mean, look at everything around you. It all was created by God. So let's watch our videos for this month. And I think we're gonna meet Jacob. What's up, everybody? My name is Jacob, and today I want to talk to you about creativity. Because there's so many different ways to be creative, right? You could be like a creative actor. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him well. Who's Yorick? You got the wrong skull, kid. Oh, 
You could be a creative dresser. <sighs> hey, you could be like a creative, I don't know, scientist? <laughs> but most of the time when you hear the word creativity, you think of something like this, a work of art. Or maybe you think of something like this. Wonder what's got him so anxious. Oh! Oh! Ugh, ewy. In today's story, you're going to hear about the very best creation of all time. Actually, it's the very first creation of all time. It's where creativity was born. And cockroaches. Ugh. No, it's good. It's, uh, it's indescribable. See you in a few. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Genesis, chapters 1 and 2. In the beginning, the very beginning, before the first breath, before the first flash of color, before the first moment in time, there was nothing. Nothing. Nothing except God. But when God saw nothing, he saw a blank canvas. He saw the perfect backdrop for a work of art beyond imagination. So, God created. From absolutely nothing, he brought forth the heavens and the earth. But there was no shape or form. God's spirit hovered over the dark emptiness. Then, God called out, Let there be light. Brilliant light shattered the darkness like golden trumpets on a still morning. Bright rays shimmered and danced in all the hues of the rainbow. God saw the light was good. He divided the light from the dark, calling the light day and the darkness night. Evening and morning together shaped the very first day of all time. Then God said, Let there be a huge space between the waters. Let it separate water from water. By his words alone, God shifted the waters, leaving a vast arching space above, the sky. Evening and morning rolled past, the second day. God lifted his voice again. Let the water under the sky be gathered into one place. Let ground appear. Dry land shrugged its way out of the water. Islands and vast continents and gritty deserts and towering mountains. God called the dry ground land, and he called all the gathered waters seas. But God had even bigger plans for this day. Let the land produce plants, and let there be trees on the land. In moments, tall grasses unfurled across the plains, and giant redwoods shot up from the dirt. Flowers and grapevines and carrots and corn sprouted and flourished. God saw that all of it was good. That evening and morning closed out the third day. Let there be lights in the huge space of the sky. Let them separate the day from the night. At the sound of God's voice, the blazing sun exploded into being. The silvery moon spun out. Stars and galaxies flooded into space, filling the universe. Pew, pew, pew. God set the sun to rule the day and the moon to rule the night. And God saw it was good. That evening and morning made up the fourth day. But God wasn't done painting his masterpiece just yet. Let the seas be filled with living things. Let birds fly above the earth and across the huge space of the sky. Instantly, the seas and rivers and ponds writhed with dolphins and octopi, salmon and minnows, 
Eagles soared and bluebirds nested while ostriches stretched their long necks. God saw they were good. That evening and morning formed the fifth day, but God kept working on his creation. Let there be livestock and creatures that move along the ground and wild animals. At once, animals of every kind appeared. Elephants thundered through the forests and squirrels darted up tree trunks. Monkeys chattered and pigs rolled happily in the mud. God saw it was all good, but he had one more creation in mind. Let us make human beings so that they are like us. Let them rule over the fish and the birds. Let them rule over all the animals. Then, with his own hands, God formed the very first man and the very first woman, Adam and Eve. I am me. And you are you. And this place, it's beyond words. Unlike the animals, God made people in his image to reflect him. Have children and fill the earth. Rule over the fish and the birds and every living creature. I am giving you every plant on the earth for food. God looked over everything he had created and saw that it was very good. That evening and morning were the sixth day. And on the seventh day, God rested. <laughs> I mean, his work was finished. His glorious creation was complete. But because God had formed people in his image, they too could reflect his imagination and creativity. The possibilities ahead of them were endless. Okay, I just thought of another way to describe creativity. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you were made in God's image. I mean, God created everything, right? He made the stars and the planets and the mountains and the oceans. He made dogs and cats and elephants and ostriches. But when he made us, it got personal. God made us so that we think and feel and act a tiny bit like him. We are made in his image. So check it. Imagine looking at yourself in a mirror. That's what God is like. And no, I'm not saying that he has the same hairstyle or eye color, but look a little bit closer. There's imagination behind your eyes. You have a smile that could encourage someone when they're feeling down and your hands that could help someone lift a heavy load. Ugh. All right. Ooh. There's no limit to what God can do through you. That's because there's no limit to God's creativity. That's the one thing to remember today. There's no limit to God's creativity. Seriously, take a look this week at the things God has made and let it blow your mind. Look at the stars in the sky and think about how it could take literally millions of years just to visit one up close. Listen to the sounds outside your window at night and let yourself wonder, how do crickets make that noise anyway? And then look really close in the mirror and see how unique you are. See the color and feel the texture of your skin. Look deep in the reflection of your eyes to see a God that made you and loves you more than you could even imagine. That should give us all a lot to think about. No wonder this guy's a statue. He's thinking about God's creativity. Dude. Bible story today, we heard how God made everything, and I just wonder how we thought of some of the things he made. But let's go back for a second, and I'm going to read from my Bible the very first three 
sentences. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Wow. And of course, then we know that there was no limit to what he created because, I mean, we have snails and uh, we have snakes and we've got facial hair and we've got all kinds of stuff that he created. And he created the family from Adam and Eve. It took a really creative God to come up with the idea of people. And we want to always remember that on the inside, in our minds and in our hearts and souls, we are made to be a reflection of God. So will you pray with me? Let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Dear God, thank you for all that you made from the light and dark, to the sky and the sea, to the land and the plants, to the sun, moon and stars, to all the fish and birds and animals, and us. We know there is no limit to your creativity. And in everything, creation shows us how undescribable you are. Please help us remember that you are always in control. Help us to trust you no matter what. And we love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So we've got some things coming up in August and the biggest one is that we are doing windshield worship again at four o'clock on Sunday afternoons and you're invited. So your families can come in and pull in like we did at Vacation Bible School and you can worship at four o'clock here in the parking lot surrounded by your church family that you love. Also on the 16th of August, we are going to have a back to school bash and it's going to be COVID safe and it's for all the incoming fifth through 12th graders. So be sure to uh, watch all your emails and notices that will be coming out of student ministry so that you don't miss that. And our outgoing video that we're going to dance to today, we're going to be creative. So you're going to hear the music and you might see something on your screen and then we want you to dance and be your own creative self. I hope you all have a wonderful week and we will see you back next Sunday. Bye.
just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna. I just wanna.